To meet the throughput requirements of 4K, 8K, or high frame rate video, on FPGA or ASIC hardware you can process multiple pixels per clock. Vision HDL Toolbox makes it easy to switch your input and output between 1, 4, or 8 pixels at a time. And many of its blocks natively support multi-pixel per clock architectures, so they automatically update their simulation and HDL code generation behavior when you make this change. Algorithms such as filters and edge detectors need a neighborhood of pixels. Creating that neighborhood for the algorithm requires a few lines of pixels to be stored in a line buffer. The algorithms in Vision HDL Toolbox have this line buffer built in. But it also offers the line buffer as a standalone block so you can create your own algorithms that need a neighborhood of pixels, and that's what we'll focus on here. In single pixel mode, the line buffer stores the rows of pixels in FIFOs and outputs column vectors that are the height of the neighborhood by one pixel. It also inserts the specified padding. The shift enable output is valid not only during the valid pixel output, but also during the padding, so it can be used as an enable to buffer multiple columns into a full neighborhood window. For processing 4 or 8 pixels per clock, the line buffer outputs either 4 or 8 of these columns as a single matrix. This example processes 4 pixels per clock, and in the line buffer we specify a 5 by 5 neighborhood size, so it will output 4 columns 5 pixels high as a 5 by 4 matrix. Now, we want to create a 5 by 5 neighborhood for each pixel. We already have a column buffered for each incoming pixel, now we need to buffer five of those columns for each. To form a neighborhood for the first pixel, we need two columns of padding, then the first three columns from the first set of valid pixels. The second one requires just one column of padding and all of the columns of the first set of valid pixels. Then the third and fourth pixels require columns from the next set of incoming valid pixels. So this first set of pixels actually needs columns from three different clock cycles worth of pixel vectors. This is why in the kernel indexer subsystem we have two pipeline delays. The last two pixels from the padding vector are selected here. The first set of valid pixels is in the middle stage and then the last set is here. Since there's so much overlap between the neighborhoods of contiguous pixels, there's a lot of sharing of block RAM and shift registers here, so these resources will scale sublinearly with the number of pixels per clock. Since we're processing four incoming pixels at a time, the filters have to perform four parallel convolutions each cycle. Each filter block reshapes the matrix to a 25 by 1 vector before it performs the multiply. And we've modeled the DSP slice delays so we can simulate the proper timing. And we have also modeled the delays in the adder tree before we concatenate the result to a 4x1 output vector. Notice that we delayed the control signal bus to align its timing to the data path. In the edge detection algorithm, we have a 4 pixel vector input that we will also create a line buffer for. In this case, we only need a 3x3 neighborhood. The matrices are again reshaped and convolved against both a filter coefficient and its inverse, followed by an adder tree, and each result is squared, and the sum is compared against a threshold to determine an edge or not. And again, here we align the timing of the control bus, a few more pipelines here because of the extra multiply stage. Running this design through synthesis as is, with a target frequency of 200 MHz, meets timing easily. However, notice the amount of DSP slices. Going back to HDL Coder's reports, there are 180 multiply operations. So some of these are sharing the DSP resources on the FPGA, but we could also make some micro-architectural adjustments at this level. For instance, if you can tolerate the extra latency, you could turn on resource sharing and reduce it pretty easily, but adding that latency is typically not an option in these types of designs. Another approach is to exploit the symmetry of the filter coefficients. There are only six unique coefficients, so you could re-architect the filter to utilize pre-adders, so you only need six multipliers per pixel here, which is what Vision HDL Toolbox's built-in image filter does. So this is a good illustration of the power of bringing hardware architecture experience together with image processing algorithm expertise in this environment. 
This portion of the example illustrates how you can use the line buffer blocks in multi-pixel per clock mode to create your own custom logic if you need functionality beyond the built-in blocks. To learn more, see the documentation sections on the streaming pixel interface and the line buffer block.